next guess, I'm sure, is probably the best-known Vulcan in the universe. Do you know any other um, Vulcans in the universe on a first-name basis? Uh, he's also made a good name for himself as a movie director with Three Men and a Baby. Uh, I'd forgotten he had done that. With a good mother and funny about love, and he's starring in a television uh, movie airing on TNT cable television during the week of April 8th called Never Forget. Would you welcome Leonard Nimoy? <laughs> Really good to see you. And I know what you were smiling at when you came around the corner because I said in the monologue, he hasn't been with us for a while. <laughs> and we were looking at the records today, and I said, uh, how long has it been since Leonard was on the show? A long Remember? time. 23 years. 23 years? <laughs> yeah. Things been going well? <laughs> <laughs> so how come you never wrote? We never heard from you. I couldn't believe that. It was 1968, I guess. Yeah. And uh, I forgot. I had to look it up. Somebody told me you were, you were plugging an album or you had done an album. In those days, uh, that's probably true. Yeah. I, would do, I would do anything. <laughs> anything, yeah. What was happening was uh, I suddenly got uh, kind of famous with this Spock thing. Right. And uh, it was a very intense identification. And right. good friends of mine were saying to me, what are you going to do when this show is over? You know, <laughs> what do you mean? What am I going to do? I get a job, won't I? Yeah. <laughs> you know. Life and there was a in, question right. about whether or not I would be able to, to get out of that Right. That uh, character. So I was trying everything. I came on your show and sang for you. That's right. It was kind of a... And, and you said, bring that guy back in 23 years. <laughs> <laughs> With a voice like that, this man's in demand. <laughs> you know, a lot of people who are not uh, necessarily singers have made albums. And uh, one night we had a bunch of albums and it was incredible. Yeah. Uh, Hugh Downs had made an album. Robert Mitchum. If you can imagine, had done some calypso numbers or something. There was a, probably a period in his career where somebody said, "Hey, Bob, you're hot. Make a yeah, uh, try it, sure." Doing the spot character that was such, as you said, such a heavy, heavy identification, yeah. and it'll probably follow you, and maybe you, you're, you're grateful for it because the show. Uh, yeah. Some kids bring feathers. You see? Vulcans bring ears. You brought me some ears. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't they have you back somewhere? I read a few uh, days ago in some town, or were they all put the ears on? Uh, I don't know. I thought I you were visiting somewhere where they were honoring you and the old townspeople. Yeah. Maybe it was one of the Star Trek reunions. Yeah. Put on the spot. They do that. Show. They do that. Yeah. I was in Denver a few days ago for a convention. That's probably what you're thinking about. Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah. Does it, does it bother you in any way that the identification is so strong that you find it difficult sometimes to step aside and people say, yeah, that's, that's Dr. Spock doing the I don't doing think so. Role. I don't think so. I suppose, you know, there's, there's probably a great story in this someplace, but the, the fact is... I'm a very grateful guy, you know. I mean, I'm still around and, uh, and still finding work, still uh, uh, have opportunities, haven't stopped working since I put the years right. on, you know. So what's there to complain about? Yeah. Sure, there's a lot, of, a lot of identification. Every once in a while, you walk down the street and it gets a little embarrassing, somebody else, ah! You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. As you said, it was a, the show could have run forever, almost. Yeah. Because yeah. of the cast. Well, run, this, right? your network and, and all their, all their intel, these guys know what they're doing, you know. Yeah. They canceled this. 23 years ago, we've been going strong ever since. That's right. <laughs> it's been a come and go thing because the fanatics, the fans of, of, of Star Trek, yeah. are legion. And yeah. I think they came back in 23 all, all together. Uh, we, we went off the air in 1968. We did three right. seasons on NBC, yeah. 66, 67, right. 68. This is the 25th anniversary, this year is the 25th anniversary of the debut of Star Trek. That's incredible. We that's, went on the air in September. That's a remarkable record. Yeah. yeah. Steady work. Uh, steady work, that's right. Let me take a break. We have yeah. to uh, we have to take a short break. We're coming right back. Here we are. It's here. Was it 1968? I can't believe it. We're back, rocking with um, Leonard Nimoy. You know. We were just mentioning during the break, your, your parents were originally uh, Russian immigrants. That's right. But you never came. picked up on the language, and you heard that I was studying Russian, which is, yeah. I don't know why exactly. Well, my folks, we all lived in a, uh, one apartment, my, my brother and myself, my parents and my grandparents, uh, when I was growing up, and they spoke Russian fluently, but they would not teach it to us because that, they kept that as a secret language. So oh. if they wanted to talk stuff that the kids shouldn't oh. understand, they spoke in Russian. Yes. Great idea. Yeah. Well, I never got to learn the language as a result, you know. Yeah. 
You say you, you went back about three and a half we years ago. We were there. Ago. My wife and I were th there three and a half years ago. They invited us over to show Star Trek IV right. because it was about whale conservation right. and the Russians had just signed a moratorium on, on whale, uh, commercial whaling. And uh, it, it was just around the time when Gorbachev had cut down on the liquor supply because he thought the Russians were too drunk too much of the time. That's you know? right. He made it difficult to buy vodka. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He shut the, uh, cut down on the store hours and, right. and made it <laughs> tough. And there was some humor about it. There was, the joke going around Moscow was a kid sees a terrible car crash. car is burning, and he rushes over, and he pulls a person out of the car, and it's Gorbachev. He saved his life. And, and Gorbachev says to him, you saved my life. You can have anything you want. The kid says, I want to be buried in Red Square in the Kremlin. He says, how old are you? Just I'm 17. He says, well, why are you preoccupied about where you're going to be buried? You're only 17 years old. Your whole life is ahead of you. He says, no, no, no. When I go home and tell my father that I saved the guy who cut off his vodka, he's going to kill me. <laughs> <laughs> so they have that. That's funny. Well, they're having big trouble here. I hope they're working out. <laughs> you said you went back to the village where your folk came Yeah, in the Ukraine. It was a very emotional trip to me. Been. Yeah, because I remember as a little kid hearing about it all the time. You know, the, the romantic nostalgia about sure. where your parents came from and that sort of thing. It was quite a trip. It was an airplane. It was a train. It was a car. And... Uh, there it was. But know. it is kind of nice. There's something about going back and touching yeah. the base with your roots, even roots, if you don't yeah. remember it much. Exactly. It's a sense yeah. of uh, identity. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Tell me about the movie you're doing called Don't Forget. I know what it's about, but it's, it's almost forget. bizarre in this day and age that yeah. people... It's a, it's a fresh story. It's a Southern California story, true right. story, based on a guy who, <clears throat> who lives here in Southern California. Um, it's a story where the good guys win. This, this guy, uh, with his family, was taken into Auschwitz when he, when he was a teenager, came out alone, lost everybody, lost his father, his mother, his sisters, his brother, uh, established a family here in Southern California in a successful business. And then along comes an organization known as the Institute for Historical Review, who actually published a claim that the Holocaust was a hoax, that the Nazis never killed anybody during the Second World War, and never, never, there never was a Holocaust. And he wrote a letter denouncing them in some newspapers, and they in turn wrote a letter to him and said, we offer a reward to anybody who can prove that Jews were gassed by the Nazis, and you, seem, you claim you have some proof. You bring your proof to us, and if you can prove it to us, we'll give you this reward. And if you don't accept this right. challenge, we'll be forced to notify the newspapers of that. And he took the challenge. Yeah, he took the challenge. That was really was kind of... He felt responsible. He felt like he couldn't let this pass because they would be calling him a fraud and it was like desecrating everything about his past, you know. So he took them on and he beat them in court, in Los Angeles Superior Court right. in 1981. And for the first time, it went into the American uh, law, uh, law books right. uh, that the Holocaust was a legal established fact. And, 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 uh, it's, it's hard a, to believe it's a in nice this day story. and age that people would, yeah. uh, would question something yeah. that's, that but is... It's, a, it's an uplifting story that about this guy and his family and right. what they went through. And a, and a lawyer played by Dabney Coleman, a wonderful guy named yeah. Bill Cox, who took on his case. It's right. a terrific story. Good. Look forward to seeing it. Thank Great you. Great luck with it. Thank you guys still keep them doing some directing also? Well, yes. Right now, we're, we're getting ready to make another Star Trek movie. That's why Star Trek... Star Trek 6. Oh, I did a joke about it. Now, I have to yeah. tell you. <laughs> and you'll appreciate the joke. Yeah. You'll appreciate the joke. It wasn't, it wasn't in any way uh, pejorative. I said, you know, the Star Trek cast is getting along in years. You know, they've been around. And I said, the Star Trek 6 is called The Search for Regularity. <laughs> so I, I hope you don't mind. I think that's great. We're looking for a title. I'll bring that one back to the studio. Well, thanks for I know you have to run it away. Thanks for coming here.